so fucking good. God damn it. <laughs> Caitlin Tarver. Perhaps you might remember her. You might know her from the famous Disney Channel show, Big Time Rush. Uh, I was not a Disney Channel kid, so it is uh, definitely not of my time. I'm definitely more familiar with Nickelodeon and Cart Cartoon Network. So, yeah, but I got to know Caitlin Tarver because she opened for James Bay. And I chronicled this in my Washington, D.C. 2022 vlog. Uh, I went to Washington, D.C. with my girlfriend. We went to go see James Bay. And Caitlin Tarver opened for James. I mean, she just definitely took me by surprise. I mean, you know how like when you go to a to a show and and like the opener, you're like, you know, you don't really care about the opener, let's be honest, unless it's someone that you've been following, but she took the stage. It was a very simple acoustic, you know, set pretty much, but she did a great job and I really connected with her performance and her music and I followed her and um not <laughs> That was ter that's terrible. I No, not like that, of course. I followed her Instagram from there. I mean, I took a picture with her and everything, you know, because uh, uh, she had a merch, uh, merch set up and everything. So before James Bay got to play, I, I got to snap a picture with her. That was after the show, I think. Yeah, that was after the show had ended. So that was that was cool. And my girlfriend recognized her, which was cool for her. You know, it's like someone that she used to watch on TV. But yeah, Caitlin Tarver, she's been really just releasing a whole bunch of new music because she's putting out a new album in February. Uh, it's called Quitter, and she's released a few of the songs that are going to be on this album, and they're all pretty much fire. Um, I mean, some I feel stronger than others, but they're pretty, they're pretty good, and they're, they're all at least consistent with what the theme of the album is and with what each song sort of is, I think. Yeah, the, just the mood of, of the album as a whole. I mean, it's called Quitter, for God's sakes. But Caitlyn's very, very special, and she put a song out called Cinematic uh, a while ago. This was like fucking, yeah, July 7th, literally. I think I'm going to be the first person on YouTube that is going to talk about it, I think. Um, maybe not the first person to react to it, but at least sort of analyze it, I guess. So I'm excited for that, but always excited to, to give my time to sort of up-and-coming artists, although um, Caitlyn is an established artist, I think. But um, definitely, you know, you know, not as big as your, you know, Ariana Grande's or Taylor Swift's, but she very well should be. Because Cinematic is the first song, really, that I listened to from her, where I was like, wow. And so I figured, my first video talking about Caitlyn Tarver, I'm going to talk about Cinematic. We're going to analyze the song, we're going to react to to the song here together, um, Caitlin Tarver, Cinematic. I wanna go to New York Get drunk with you in the East Village Say too much to a stranger About the ways we've changed And the ways we didn't And I might order another Laugh about how I said I wouldn't justify it with something like What's one more when we're already drinking? I get so sentimental over small things you Say I'm obsessed with nostalgia, but I think What's the point of all this living if you can't go back and grab it? Make it cinematic, <laughs> prove you really had it Ooh. Oh boy. We're coming home today, boys. I don't know what that means. Wanna go to a party? Tell jokes in someone's kitchen. Pass that donor on the drive home. It closed down and we both still miss it. But you make fun of the way I romanticize a restaurant. Defend myself by saying something like. It was my favorite, you just don't get it
obsessed with nostalgia, but I think What's the point of all this living if you can't go back and grab it? Make it cinematic, prove you really had it Oh my god, are you insane? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Are you insane? Like, I, I, I already said that. I already said that. Oh god. This is this always happens. This always happens. I, I do a really a song that I really enjoy, and I react right in front of all of you, and I lose my shit. It happens. All the fucking time. And it happened again. God damn it. Why are you... Caitlin, come on, man. Like, all you people, go and listen to her stuff. I swear to God. Why is this not at the top of the charts? Why is this not... Why is this not up there? I don't understand. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Caitlin Tarver. She is genuine. Sincere. It's not just about when I saw her perform. Like, her songs, like, I don't know. I just... Her songwriting... Her lyrics, especially, um, her melodies, uh, her instrumentation. There's so much attention to detail. There's so much storytelling. There's so much nuance. There's so much love, you know, um, put into it. So much honesty, sincerity. And it comes off like that. I mean, it just, I, I can't, like, there are so many artists today, and I'm not going to name any names, but I, there are artists today where I listen to them and I'm like, Look, I, I know you put all of your heart into this. I believe you. You know, you're, you're doing great. You're, you're putting your heart into this, right? But, like, there are others, not like Caitlin Tarver, that where I'm like, I, I am like, mm, I don't know. Not only is your stuff not that good, but I just don't, I don't really, I don't really feel it from you. You know, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm a cynical, you know, terrible person. Maybe everyone is just putting it their all and everyone's passionate about everything that they do, but... I think, I think for the most part, everyone is mostly passionate about what they do, you know, popular or unpopular or famous or not famous. I, I, you know, there are some people that just kind of rub me the wrong way. I'm just like, I don't know. I just don't really buy it from you, you know, and even some people who are really famous who do, who have even some good songs. I'm like, mm, I don't know. I, I don't feel like you're in it. You're in it completely. I feel like there's other aspects of, of life, of culture, of, of ego even that get in the way of your art, you know, of expressing it you know, authentically and, and good, <laughs> you know what I mean? And in a good way, I listen to Caitlin Tarver and even songs, this is how I know, even songs that I'm not super crazy about, like some songs in her Quitter album, like one really so far, I'm like, you know, all right, I'll let it slip by. You know what I mean? You got, you got all these other songs like cinematic that are just, just pouring your heart out, pouring it's, it's heart out really with art and sincerity and humility, but also like badassery, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's like confident, you know what I mean? It's not bad ego, it's confident, but it's, it's humble, you know, but it's, and it's authentic, it's powerful. Um, and that's what cinematic is to me when I, when I first listened to this song, I just, oh my God. And now I listen to it again. I almost had a second coming, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I mean, it just literally happened. It's such, a, such an incredible song. So and here's the thing, too, is I'm not a big lyrics guy, as some of you may know, but following the lyrics to, the, to this song on the visualizer, I was feeling the song that much more. It resonated with me that much more upon reading the lyrics. And really, any song can probably do this to me if I just paid attention to the lyrics. But um, I loved this song before the lyrics. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I knew the sort of idea of the song, but once I really paid attention... It really hit home. Uh, I will say uh, the actual visualizer itself is really, really cool. It hits in all the right spots. I mean, it's in a bar, which is cool. Uh, it sort of it alludes to the actual lyrics of the song. I love how she's kind of swiveling the glass. You know, that's a really cool touch. I love that. But specifically, my favorite shot is just the, the camera, like really zooming in on the glass of beer and it kind of panning up just kind of going up and like the, the sizzles, you know, the bubbles of the beer inside, like are just fizzling up. That is phenomenal. And it's even that more phenomenal because the song itself is about, hey, I love attention to detail. I love that shit. Make it cinematic, right? That is cinema to me, is looking back at great details in my life, specific moments in my life, or moments right now in my life, 
that I want to highlight, that I really want to pay attention to. Things that most people don't really care about, like staring at a ga- at, at, at a beer uh, glass and seeing the, the little bubbles like fizz up. You know what I mean? Like, I love that shit. And that's what's in here. And it really highlights the themes of the song. Now, the actual song itself um, is uh, phenomenal. Uh, my favorite little little melody line is with that piano. da 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 that melody line right there with the little piano is so good and it's played so delicately which goes along with the theme of attention to detail right it's about the small things you know the things that most people would never notice don't really care about and so the fact that it's played so lightly uh, it really adds uh to the beauty of it and it adds to the theme of the song so that's really my favorite part of the song i love it and then i love how her background vocals uh at the latter end of the song she sort of goes along with them with that melody line but the whole song itself and and now don't get me wrong her her music in general is very subtle has very subtle instrumentation but this one specifically it's very powerful it has a pounding like heartbeat to it with the percussion but it's also very subtle it feels like you're getting punched in the face with love (laughs) that's kind of what it sounds like and it's awesome it goes along again with the themes of the song but also being firm and being confident which at the end of the day the lyrics of the song and really the story that she's trying to say like she's getting confronted by these people like you know why you know why do you care about this diner you know why do you pay attention to this detail you know and then she's like because uh, i and then she answers them and then she finally you know just embraces it you know and and she just stands her ground and she says make it fucking cinematic you know what's the point of all this living if you can't go back and grab it you know and that's such a firm you know confident stance And that to me is the percussion, you know, in many ways. It's very sentimental, very detailed, very, very subtle, but powerful and firm. Caitlin Tarver's singing is phenomenal. I've always loved her singing. I think, um, you know, she does a great job live. She has a beautiful voice live. But, you know, artists like Caitlin Tarver, like Billie Eilish, um, you know, they really like go, you know, hit home runs in the studio because of post-production. You can really highlight a person's style like uh, the style of Billie Eilish or Caitlin Tarver through post-production in the studio. Uh, and it can work live, but it's it's never really the same. You know, it's just different. With really listening to Caitlin Tarver, you know, from the studio, right? From her songs, you know, from your streaming service or your fucking CD or your vinyl or whatever, uh, it just really hits home. I mean, it's a well-produced song and her vocals are no exception. And, you know, I just love her style of vocals. Uh, again, very minimalist, um, but she's a very powerful singer, and she shows this in, in other songs in the album as well. But, you know, she has this kind of, you know, like, laissez-faire, like, you know, I guess the sentiment of all the small things What's the point of all this living? She doesn't really move her mouth that much, um, but it's 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 a, it's a style of singing you know and it's really effective <laughs> it's it's really cool and really i mean that chorus is fucking fantastic i mean just the you know make it cinematic prove you really had it you know and then and then it falls up with the da 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 i it just it gives me chills i just that chorus line right there or I guess it's really sort of the post-chorus. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. The chorus is kind of short. Uh, you don't really know what is the, the, the post-chorus, what the chorus is, or what the, you know, like, it's an amazing, amazing chorus, nonetheless. The piano melody line uh, following that chorus uh, is just fantastic, but them together is a duo that I just, I melts my heart, really. But, um, you know, I mean, these lyrics, man, I mean, just go along so perfectly well with the song. Uh, you know, and what the song's trying to say, of course, uh, I mean, all these things, I mean, I want to go to New York, get drunk with you in the East Village, say too much to a stranger about the ways we've changed, the ways we didn't, I might order another, laugh about how I said I wouldn't, justify it with something like, what's one more when we're already drinking? And then, that pre-chorus, I get so sentimental, it's, it's so nice, but like, yeah, that, that pre-chorus really sort of highlights the, the the meaning of the song, right? I get so sentimental over small things. You say I'm obsessed with nostalgia, but I think, what's the point of all this living if you can't go back and grab it? I mean, like, that really is the thesis of this whole song. It's, you know, things like going and getting drunk. I mean, is that the best thing to do? Probably not. But 
if you know, if you do it in moderation, you're not some, you know, raging alcoholic, you know, like you're fine. You know what I mean? Like enjoy yourself. Go ahead. Take a breather. You know, maybe, you know, you work too damn hard. Maybe you got to go and relax, you know? And so it's this thing of like, you know, just, just like fucking take it easy. You know what I mean? Like, hold on, you know, don't beat yourself up too much, you know? And for those of us, you know, if you work really hard, you can really relate. If you have too high expectations of yourself, you know, you can really relate to this song. If you feel like the world's beating you down, you know, um, and it doesn't really care what you have to think, this song really speaks to you. Um, but yeah, you know, getting drunk, talking with a stranger, you know, ordering another, you know what I mean, when you said you didn't, and just laugh about it. You know what I mean? Don't take it too far, right? But laugh about it. Have some fun. But also, here is, I guess, the point where, you know, just like, you can really hit enlightenment stage, you know, with this song, you know, where you can really, I guess, go further with it is like, what if that scenario that she's singing about that in that first verse, what if it led to something really bad? What if she was, you know, she, she completely just got blackout drunk and it was a really shitty experience. We don't know that, you know, but the fact that her character, um, in this song, I, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm guessing that this is the type of person that would 10 years later, five years later, maybe a month later, you know, looks back at that and extracts the goodness out of that moment, out of what you felt. And maybe it led to something really bad, but you extracted the good that did come out of that. Because as awful as things may be, unless it's literally like the worst fucking thing ever, there sometimes can be some good things, you know? And and that's a way to either cope, you know, um, with with some of some of bad things that happen to you. But it's also a way of just positively looking at life. And, 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 and being just more optimistic about it and not being so hung up on the bad stuff. Uh, and so, you know, you can interpret it, you know, in all these different ways. And, and when she goes and, and she says, you know, I want to go to a party, tell jokes, pass that diner on the drive home, it closed down and we both still miss it. You know, so that's a bad thing, you know what I mean? But you, it closed down, but you, you, you remember when you went, when you went to that diner and you ate in it and you enjoyed your time with whoever you know the employees or whatever you like the food and but then eventually it did close down but later later you still drive by it and you think about the good stuff even though it is closed down and that's in the second verse so again it's this thing where it's like yeah maybe some of these are good moments of moderation maybe just having fun maybe relaxing but maybe some of these moments might have turned really bad at some point you know but the whole point is what is the point of all this living? What's the point of living the good and the bad and being in the present? And it, what's the point if you can't look back and think about it and reminisce and extract the good out of it to make you feel good in the present, to extract the bad out of it to learn something new in the present that you can use in the future or the goodness to, to motivate you for the future things? You know, like, what's the point of living all of those things that may be really bad or might have been pretty good? If you can't use them, if you can't extract the goodness out of them or use them for something better or reminisce about something that's bad, maybe, maybe you, maybe you're that person who, I mean, I'm certainly that type of person too, where I think about some sad moments in my life and it brings me comfort. It's like that Kurt Cobain song. I miss the comfort in being sad, you know, because even in certain moments like that, there is some comfort out of it and it can be nice, you know, it can be nostalgic, right? You know, nostalgia can be good or bad. And so it's, I just love this sort of embrace that this song has of, of acceptance, you know what I mean? Of just em em embracing the good and the bad and seeing the beauty in pretty much everything, unless it's like completely fucking awful. You know what I mean? Like it, it's that type of thing. Like, even the beer right here, you know, some people may look at that beer and associate it with, oh my god, no, like, I, I just, I, I don't like that, my family used to drink a lot, I hate drinking, or, oh god, no, that reminds me of a bad time, I blacked out, or whatever the hell, or, um, I just, I don't like addiction, you know, I, I just, but, there's beauty in, in that beer glass, that I, and I'm not, I, I'm, a, I'm the most straight edge fucking person you will ever know, and I saw that shit, and I was like, I dig it, <laughs> so, there is cinema, there is beauty, in pretty much 99.9% .9 of everything in life. And it's up to you to make something of it. Uh, it's up to you to look back and grab it and use it for something good, appreciate it, learn something from it, but also pay attention to the small things. Be sentimental over the small things. Pay attention to those details because that is what makes a life worth living at the end of the day. 
I, I've always said this. I mean, art in general to me is the reason why I have motivation to continue my day, to wake up, is music, is songs like this. And these are small things. I mean, this song is a fucking two minute and 30 second song. Is it fucking consequential to my whole life existence? To everyone else? To the world? Eh, probably not. But to me it is. You know, to my heart it is. To my mind. It brings me meaning. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel nostalgic. Uh, it does many things. But it's meaningful. And you know what? If it was just two minutes and 30 seconds, uh, and I listen to it sometimes in my life, I maybe listen to it, you know, 30 times my whole life, you know, or 50 or whatever, and I never listen to it again, well, fuck it. That's what happened. And maybe I'll look back on it and appreciate those 50 listens. I'll appreciate those two minutes and 30 seconds. Or maybe it's my favorite fucking song of all time, and I listen to it every single day. I think that's, I think that's sort of what I'm getting out from this, uh, getting out of this song. But here's the thing. She might be saying something completely, completely different. Who the fuck knows? That's the beauty of music, right? Um, so those are my thoughts on Caitlin Tarver's cinematic. This was fun. Let me know in the comment section below if you if you liked my thoughts. Do you like the song? Do you hate the song? Please let me know. Uh, let me know your analysis as well. Give this video a like if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Go and share this song, this video, with your Caitlin Tarver friends or people who may like Caitlin Tarver, who like this type of music. Go ahead and share it with them. Or the haters. Fuck it. Just send it to them. What's the worst that can happen? Seriously. Subscribe to my channel if you really, really enjoy this content. If you want to see more stuff like this. Check out my other videos, of course, anytime. If it's your birthday, happy birthday to you, you beautiful creature. Uh, but I think that's it for me. You all take care. Stay safe. And until next time, I love you. go back and grab it. Make it cinematic. Prove you really had it